नमस्कार हूँ आदर्श छू वेलकम टू आदर्श एजुकेशन सोसायटी Hello students. So today we will study the next topic of chapter five, standard nine. The chapter name is Introduction to Euclid's Geometry. So uh, we have started with the basic terminology. Then first thing that we have study is the definitions that is given by the Euclid's. So now after giving the definitions of some terms. Euclid's assumes some certain properties, right? Euclid's assumes certain properties, so that assumptions of the properties cannot be proved. Because why they cannot be proved? Because they are the obvious universal truth. Now, what we can say as an obvious universal truth? One of the example is that uh, is like that sun is rise from the east direction and that is obvious truth there is no need to prove that statement so in the same way the certain properties that euclid assumes they are also obvious universal truth and that is why that statements that properties have no proof that we have to accept right on the base of that assumption then we can prove the other statements okay so that that obvious universal truth or certain properties that uh, Euclid assumes is divided into two parts. One is called as axioms and second is called as a postulate. So what is the difference between axioms and postulates? See, axioms are that properties which used in throughout mathematics, which is useful to throughout mathematics. While the postulates are the statement or the properties which are specific to geometry only. Right? Axioms are useful throughout the mathematics. Postulates are specific to geometry. Let us uh, take an example. Uh, there is a properties uh, like uh, we want to uh, some property is related to the drawing. Right? like a line segment right so if we want to draw a line segment then there is we will get some property we will see in the axioms then the property which is related to the length because line has a some length so that property is only specific to geometry we cannot take that property which is related to the line segment useful to the axioms right so axioms are that segment which are used throughout the mathematics so let us study the axioms in today's class okay so some of the axioms actually euclid have given more axioms but some of the axioms that we have to study in this class and also that axioms are made not in the order right okay so you do not have to remember like that the first axiom is this second one is this it is not compulsory okay so the first axiom is this things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another see things which are equal to the same things we can see that uh, let's take an example that the line segment ab the length of the line segment ab is equal to 5 and another line segment bc is also equal to 5 so the line segment ab and bc things which are equal to the same things that means a b and b c both are equal to the 5 so we can say that the a b and b c both are equal understand things which are equal to the same things are equal to one another okay so this thing we can apply both to the geometry and to the arithmetic also like we can say that the weight of one person is 50 kg and weight of the another person is also 50 kg so we can say that the uh, weight of both the persons are also equal so in this way we can apply the axioms to both the arithmetic and to geometry okay second axiom is if equals are added to equals the whole are equal 
equals are added to equals. That means, suppose we have two equal things. Let's take two digit. One is 20, second one is 10, 20. So, if we add 5 to both the side, then what will happen? Here we will get 20 plus 5. Here also we will get 20 plus 5. 20 plus 5. So, total here we get is 25 and here also we get the 25. That means, the, both the side of equation we can say that is equal. This thing we are used in standard 8 while we are solving the linear pair in one variable. Then what we will use to do when we have to solve the linear equation, both the side we are adding the same thing or subtracting the same thing. By doing this, one thing we are we notice that the equality remains same. Right? So this thing is said here in the second axiom that if equals are added to the equals, the whole are equal. Okay. The third one is the whole is greater than the part. Whole means the total area or the total thing or we can say that the 100% of anything is greater than the part. Part means the uh, portion of the whole. Like we can say that 20% is a part of 100. Right. So, in another way we can say that this is a whole world. Then we can say that this pipe is a part of this whole world. Also, this upper pipe is, is a part of this whole board. Okay. So, this is the third postulate, the third axiom that the whole is greater than the part. Understand? Okay. Okay. So, now the fourth axiom is if equals are subtracted from equals, the remainders are equal. Right. This is also the same thing that we have used while solving the uh, pair, uh, solving the linear equation in one variable. Whenever you want to subtract something from the left hand side, we must have to subtract that value from the right hand side only. That means we have to subtract equal values from the both the side. That is why the equality remains as it is. Okay. So this is uh, given by this statement. Okay. Now, what is the fifth one? Fifth one is things which are double of the same things are equal to one another. Things which are double of the same things. We have to take the same things. Let's take a, uh, as an example of a 5 kg of sugar that we have taken as a two equal things. Now, what will happen if we double both the this side we will get the 10 kg if we double. This side also if we double then it will become the 10 kg. So both 10 kg and 10 kg will also be equal. So things which are double of the same things are equal to one another. Okay. Okay. Now sixth one is things which coincide with one another are equal to one another. Now see, what is the meaning of this coincide? Coincide means to cover the whole thing. Like if we have a coin of 1 rupees, then if we put 1 rupees coin on that first coin, then the first coin will be totally covered by the second coin. So if it will happen, then we can say that both the coins are equal. So things which coincide with one another are equal to one another. Like our hand. If I cover this hand with this hand, you can see that nothing we can see for this hand. If I cover this hand with this hand, you cannot see my this hand. So, both are coincide with each other. So, we can say that both the hands are equal. So, the same thing is given here as a sixth axiom. Now, the last seventh one is things which are halves of the same things are equal to one another. Now the meaning of halves means to divide by two. Let's suppose uh, we have a six liter of water first side and second side also the six liter of water. That means things which are half of the same things. We have to take same things. Six liter, six liter. Now what will happen if we divide it by two? If we take the half water from it, this side also remains the three liter this side also remains the 3 liter of water. 
then what will happen? Both the are creators and both are again equals. So, things which are halves of the same things are equal to one another. Okay. So, these are the seven axioms that is given in our textbook. There are also many axioms, but still currently we have to study these seven axioms. Again, these axioms are not in the order. So, you have never asked that to write down the sixth axiom or seventh axiom. Yes, you have asked that to uh, write down any two axioms of the given axioms. So, you can write down any of the two axioms out of seven. Okay? Understand all the axioms? Okay. So, this is all about this lecture. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.